stage tunes read. From the pages of Page Tunes Magazine, monthly number two, February 2024. Story and artwork by Michael Zeigerlig. The village that time forgot. I was a wanderer of the woods, an adventurer seeking solace and connection with the natural world. The dense foliage of the Tongass National Forest surrounded me as I meandered through the forest trails, guided by an unspoken call of the wild. One fateful day, as the sunlight filtered through the leaves and cast dappled shadows on the forest floor, my path took an unexpected turn. I stumbled upon a trail so hidden and winding that it seemed as if it had materialized just for me. It beckoned me to explore its mysteries, and with a sense of curiosity, I followed it. As I ventured further along the twisting path, the forest opened up, revealing a sight that defied all logic and reason. Blackwood, the village that time had forgotten, stood before me, its rustic charm beckoning like a siren's call. It was as if I had stepped into a different world, a world untouched by the hands of time. The villagers of Blackwood went about their daily tasks with an air of simplicity and grace. They noticed me, a stranger with clothing and mannerisms that were unlike anything they had ever encountered. Their eyes bore a mix of fascination and curiosity, like they had witnessed a living enigma. But I was acutely aware that I must not reveal the existence of the modern world to these isolated townsfolk. I had to maintain the facade that I had crafted. In this realm untouched by time, I was but a wandering writer from a distant land. It was a clever ruse that explained my unfamiliarity with their customs, a tale that seemed to appease their inquisitiveness. The people of Blackwood lived in a world that was a stark contrast to the fast-paced modern reality I had known. They were a simple folk, their lives intricately woven into the fabric of the village, mirroring medieval times in a way that was both charming and quaint. I found myself drawn into their world as if it had cast a spell upon me. The village embraced me with open arms, and I soon became a part of their daily existence. The routines of Blackwood were rituals of simplicity, each action performed with a sense of reverence for tradition. The villagers toiled in the fields, cultivating crops and tending to livestock. They used tools and methods that had been passed down through generations, a testament to their commitment to preserving their way of life. The sight of oxen pulling wooden plows across the fertile soil transported me to a time long past. As I observed the villagers in their everyday routines, a peculiar and unsettling pattern emerged. It seemed as though the passage of time within this small community operated on a mysterious and accelerated scale. In what should have been the span of a mere thirty years, the villagers aged as if subjected to a rapid metamorphosis experiencing the wear and tear of six or seven decades. Evenings in Blackwood were a celebration of community, where the villagers gathered in the town square to share stories, laughter, and the fruits of their labor. The glow of torches and the warmth of bonfires illuminated the faces of those gathered, creating an atmosphere of intimacy that was rare in the outside world. As the days turned into weeks, I marveled at the simplicity and innocence that prevailed in the village. Life in Blackwood had a tranquility that was a balm for the soul, a reminder that amid the rush of modernity, there was a beauty in embracing the past. Amidst the rustic charm that enveloped Blackwood, my path serendipitously crossed with Mary, a woman of ethereal beauty. She was a vision of grace and serenity an embodiment of the timeless enchantment that seemed to flow through the very air of the village. Yet Mary was more than just a stunning presence in Blackwood. She held a position that was revered by all. To the villagers, she was nothing short of a deity. They regarded her with an awe that transcended mere admiration. She was a healer, but her gift went beyond what one could find in any mundane remedy. With a gentle touch, Mary had the power to mend wounds, cure ailments, and soothe the suffering of those who sought her help. It was as if the very essence of the forest and the spirits that resided within it had bestowed upon her this incredible ability. The villagers believed that her hands held the magic of the ancient woods, 
and they came to her with ailments both big and small, knowing that her touch would bring solace and healing. As I spent more time in Blackwood, I found myself drawn to Mary, not just by her extraordinary gift, but by the warmth and kindness that radiated from her. Our connection was instantaneous, as if the boundaries of time had blurred in that moment. I had entered Blackwood as an outsider, but in Mary, I had found a friend and confidant. Our bond deepened as we shared stories and experiences. I marveled at the tale she told of the village's history, of traditions passed down through generations, and of the very land itself, which seemed to hold secrets that only she could uncover. Mary's presence was a guiding light in Blackwood, a beacon of hope in a world untouched by time. Little did I know that the more I delved into her world, the more I would uncover the hidden layers of the village's enchantment and the secrets that lay just beneath its tranquil facade. Weeks turned into months, and the bond between Mary and me deepened with every passing day. Our connection had transcended the boundaries of time and place. As I became more entwined in the daily life of the village, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was an underlying mystery, a secret that eluded my understanding. The villagers' actions and rituals, although rooted in tradition, held a sense of purpose that seemed to go beyond the surface. It was during one fateful exploration, as I followed the meandering paths and trails that crisscrossed the forests surrounding Blackwood, that I stumbled upon something that would change the course of my journey. I had an inexplicable urge to explore deeper into the woods, guided by an invisible force. As I ventured further, I found myself in an area of the forest that was different from the rest. The air was thick with a sense of enchantment, and the sounds of the outside world faded into an eerie silence. It was as if I had crossed a threshold into a realm that existed alongside but separate from Blackwood. In that moment, I discovered the entrance to a hidden sanctuary. The door, concealed behind the ancient trees and overgrown vines, opened to reveal a dimly lit room, bathed in a soft, almost otherworldly light. The room was filled with ancient tomes, scrolls, and manuscripts, each bearing the weight of centuries. As I ran my fingers over the weathered pages, I realized that I had stumbled upon Mary's secret library. It was a repository of knowledge that was far beyond anything I could have imagined, a treasure trove of wisdom and mysteries waiting to be uncovered. In the dimly lit room, the air was heavy with the scent of old parchment, and the shelves were lined with ancient tomes and scrolls, each holding the secrets of a bygone era. As I pored over the pages, the truth about Blackwood's nature began to emerge, like shadows cast by flickering candlelight. The contents of those weathered books hinted at a world far beyond the one I had known, a world intertwined with the mystical and the cosmic. It was in the pages of these texts that I stumbled upon a sinister truth, a truth that sent shivers down my spine and left my heart pounding. The villagers of Blackwood had not merely preserved an archaic way of life. They were bound to a cosmic entity named Dregonuk. Mary, the village's healer and a revered figure, had made a pact with this otherworldly being. In exchange for her loyalty, Dregonuk had granted her the elixir of eternal life. Mary's existence was linked to a malevolent force that went beyond the boundaries of time and space. The pages spoke of Dregonuk's insatiable hunger for the life force of the villagers. In return for their vitality, Mary was promised a life of immortality and dominion over the village. Dregonuk had woven a powerful barrier around Blackwood allowing only solitary wanderers like me to enter, while trapping the villagers within. The people of Blackwood had become unwitting vessels. Their lives drained to sustain Mary's unnatural existence and Dragonuk's ancient hunger. As I pieced together the dark truth, my heart was heavy with the realization that the enchantment of Blackwood was not merely a product of tradition, but a malevolent pact that had ensnared the villagers for centuries. Mary, with her serene demeanor and gentle smile, had concealed her true role in the village's plight. I kept it a secret from her, knowing full well that she was the author of the books, and therefore well aware of what she was doing to these people. I was left with a choice, to confront the sinister reality that lay beneath the village's idyllic surface, 
or to remain an unwitting pawn in a cosmic game that I had only just begun to understand. The discovery of Mary's pact with Dragonuk had opened the door to a realm of secrets and darkness that would challenge my very understanding of the world I had entered. I found myself in a quandary, torn between two worlds. On one hand, there was the world I had left behind, a modern existence filled with technology, convenience, and the relentless pace of progress. On the other hand, there was Blackwood, a village that had ensnared me with its rustic charm and mysterious enchantment. A part of me yearned to escape the village's grasp, to break free from the malevolent pact that bound the villagers to Dragonuk's insatiable hunger. I wanted to return to the life I had known, with its complexities and challenges, but also its freedom and choice. Yet an inexplicable force seemed to hold me captive, as if I were ensnared in a trance. Every time I ventured to the edge of Blackwood, determined to make my escape, a strange sensation washed over me. It was as if an invisible hand pulled me back, compelling me to remain within the village's boundaries. I made several attempts to leave, each time more resolute than the last. I told myself that I had to break free, that I couldn't remain a pawn in Dragonuk's cosmic game. But every time I ventured beyond the village's threshold, the world outside beckoning me, I found myself inexplicably drawn back to Blackwood. It was as though the village's enchantment had woven its threads deep into my very being, binding me to its fate. I questioned my own willpower, unable to understand why I was so irresistibly drawn back to Blackwood, even when I knew the truth about the sinister pact that held the village in its grasp. The sense of entrapment weighed heavily on my mind, and I knew that the only way to break free from this cosmic snare was to confront the malevolent force that bound Blackwood and its people. I was determined to unravel the secrets that lay hidden beneath the village's tranquil facade and find a way to release both myself and the villagers from the grasp of Dregonuk's insatiable hunger. Desperation weighed heavily on my shoulders, a constant companion as I grappled with the entrapment that Blackwood had imposed upon me. The village's enchantment had woven its threads deep into my very being, and I yearned for freedom, not just for myself, but for the villagers who were bound by the malevolent pact with Dragonuk. It was during my nights spent poring over Mary's secret library that a daring plan began to take shape in my mind. The knowledge gleaned from the ancient tomes and scrolls had provided me with insights into the cosmic entity, Dragonuk, and the nature of the pact. I knew that confronting this malevolent force was the key to breaking the village's curse. With a heavy heart, I resolved to make contact with Dragonuk, the cosmic devil that held Blackwood in its grip. I crafted a proposal, a dangerous gamble that I hoped would lead to the village's salvation. I offered myself as a new vessel, a fresh host for Dragonuk, in exchange for Mary. My argument was simple but risky. As a new host with knowledge of the current outside world, I could replace Mary and take the harvesting of life force to a whole new level. Life force franchising, baby. I hoped that Dragonuk's insatiable appetite for life force would be satisfied by this arrangement. With trembling hands, I invoked the ancient rites and rituals I had learned from the Forbidden Books, seeking to establish a connection with the malevolent entity that loomed over Blackwood. As I reached out to Dragonuk, the cosmic devil that had haunted Blackwood for centuries, I could only hope that my plea would reach the entity's ears and that it would consider the proposal I had put forth. I learned that the consequence of my daring plan was unfolding in the village, happening to Mary. She, the woman of ethereal beauty, aged at an alarming rate. Wrinkles etched upon her face, and her once vibrant spirit faded away. The mantle of life force vessel passed to me, a torchbearer of despair. With a heavy heart and a profound sense of responsibility, I made the toughest decision I've ever faced. I chose to take my own life, hoping that this final act would end the malevolent cycle that had ensnared Blackwood for centuries. It was a choice born of desperation, and the only way I could break free from the cosmic servitude that had bound me in the village for far too long. As I prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice, I could only hope that my actions would bring an end to the torment that had plagued Blackwood 
freeing the villagers from the cosmic slavery that had held them captive for generations. If you've been captivated by the magic of this audiobook, here's how you can immerse yourself even further and support the creation of more enthralling tales for your enjoyment. Unlock the ultimate listening journey with a yearly subscription on pagetunes.com. No interruptions, ad-free, and exclusive access to the full library of audiobooks and ebooks. Download and enjoy captivating stories offline, anytime, anywhere. Whether through subscription or individual purchases, you play a vital role in bringing more enchanting stories to life. Explore the merch store. From cozy hoodies to stylish mugs and much more, every purchase directly contributes to crafting more thrilling tales for your pleasure. Thank you and happy listening.